something about it too is it's continuous. So you're kind of working the whole time. You're not really taking rest. You're moving the whole time. So that's walking, running, cycling, swimming, biking. You're moving the whole time. So there's no rest periods. So you're ensuring that you're going to be expending energy the whole time for the 30 minutes. It's a, it's a, you can pretty much, it's easy to kind of um, quantify how much calories you burn doing cardio because you're pretty much going at the whole time. You're not really stopping or, unless you're doing interval training. Uh, but I just want to kind of keep it to the context of just general cardio, just aerobic movement. This is a less known benefit of cardio. It actually does increase our metabolism. This is one of the big things that's used to kind of sell weight training is that it boosts your metabolism because you build more muscle. But there's actually studies that I've, came, that I've come across that find that people who have a higher VO2 max have a higher resting metabolic rate. So they actually burn more calories at rest. And increased TEF is um, thermic effect of feeding. So they actually expend more energy when they eat. So being fit has a lot of benefits um, aside from health. And that's, I wanted to mention that because I, th I think it needs to be, I think it needs to be out there. I think people need to hear this because otherwise we just kind of categorize these two, you know, ways of training. So cardio kind of has a similar benefit. It does it differently. Um, and then higher training frequency. Cardio is something we could do kind of more often and it kind of ties in later with what I'll be talking about with the general health organizations out there. Um, we could do it more frequently. You can walk every day. Um, and, and swim every day and those kinds of things. So strength training, what are some of the benefits? Obviously increased muscle strength, which is very important, especially as we get older and we start to see progressive uh, you know, decline in, in strength and even muscle. Uh, strength training acts as a buffer. It acts as a buffer to, to protect muscle and also to help us gain muscle. And there's even some studies I've come across that have actually linked uh, strength with mortality. So the stronger you are, um, you know, the better overall. I think it's uh, lower mortality rates. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just like lo lo lower, like living longer, but also lower uh, morbidity, like lower diseases and risk of diseases. And even if you were to get them, there would be better prognosis after the fact. You know, better recovery better tolerance for it. Um, so remember I was talking about cardio and continuous? Well, weight training is more discreet. You have a set and you kind of stop and you rest, right? This is conventional weight training. So it's kind of hard to really quantify energy expenditure. Uh, but most of the studies that I've come across show that it has a lower energy expenditure. The calories burned during weight training are substantially less than cardio. Okay? Now, um, this is common. We know it increases resting metabolic rate. That's mainly through increasing muscle mass. So that's a, that's a well-documented benefit of, of strength training. I will throw in the little, I guess you call it a devil's advocate or caveat, in that not all studies show that it does increase resting metabolic rate. Some studies show that it's, it's like trivial uh, or negligible. So, uh, but for the most part, it does. Lower training frequency. So. We can't do it as often, and there's a reason for this that I'll go into later, but essentially... And so, one of the landmark studies I came across was from Duke University. Um, like, like I said, the CNN article, they're talking about how weights have kind of muscled its way into the spotlight. You look at the hashtag, Team No Cardio, right? So you got people who are just, you know, all about the weights and stuff, and that's fine. You know, people will gravitate towards certain training programs, but here, this is aerobic training, it's optimal for weight loss. That's what this study, this study found, and it wasn't by a little, it was actually by a lot. And in this study, they found that the weight training group actually gained weight. They gained two pounds, and the aerobic training group, they might think they lost like four to five pounds or something like that. Um, I'll talk about why that happened, but what they did find was re resistance training, again, they did gain muscle, so that's why they gained weight, they gained muscle. The only problem is they didn't lose fat, mm -hmm. but they didn't lose, you know, they didn't burn as many calories, so you're going to build muscle, but you're not going to really lose the weight. So it makes it, so some people, and I've seen this, actually looks like they gain weight when they lift weights. That's some people. And that's not talked about, especially from the people who are team no cardio. They don't really address that. A lot of times they use the exception to the rule to, as an example. Mm -hmm. Someone who has like a already high metabolism lifts weights. Yeah. Yeah. That's not really, that's not really a, a realistic, you know, representation. They should really kind of, you know what I mean? Like, most of the leanest people I find are people who do cardio mm -hmm. uh, across sports too. 
Um, so that was that study. That was a big study. This is this weight control registry. What, what this was was they followed like 10,000 people since 1993 and people who had lost at least 66 pounds and kept it off for five years. And um, the, one of the biggest, obviously one of the biggest factors was they exercised an hour a day. So exercise was big, not for, I mean diet's big, we know, but this was a strategy to help them keep the weight off, exercise. Um, and but the activity of choice, the first, the most common activity for their success in weight loss was cardio, and it was walking. And this is what they reported. I think it was like at least 51% of the participants, you know, of the 10,000 who have been in this registry. Now the second choice is weight training coming in at 29%, right? So you're like, okay, weight training, this right here kind of shows that it helps with weight, weight loss, but that's something that's not reported. Only 8% did weight training only. So the other maybe like, um, was it 29%? The, the other 21% were probably doing both, doing some walking and weights, but only 8% did weights only. It's a low percentage. All right, so why does cardio win as far as being most effective for weight loss? Well, number one, it's feasible, and it's why most, most health and fitness organizations endorse it. Um, you're not going to experience the mechanical loading like you get from weight training, so you're not going to really experience soreness per se. And so you can do it pretty much more frequently. Whereas weight training, uh, sometimes you can incur that soreness and it kind of hinders your ability to mm -hmm. you know, lift weights every day. Right. Um, so feasibility, and I just talked about the minim minimal mechanical loading. Less DOMS is less delayed onset muscle soreness. That's what we refer to it as. We usually get sore. It peaks around 48 hours, 24 to peaks at 48 right. hours. Um, and just overall greater movement time. Remember I said it was continuous? You're kind of moving the whole time. You're not taking rest periods, okay? Now there's obviously exceptions to this rule, exceptions to the rule, but I just want to kind of keep it simplistic. I'll probably answer those questions you might have as far as, you know, exceptions to the rule. I'll be more than happy to answer that. So with the weight training crowd, it, it's, it's, again, we're talking about they promote adding muscle and all of a sudden we're just going to like, the, the, the weight's just going to drop off our body. Again, it's, it's the actual energy that we expend doing weights is trivial compared to what most people put in. I mean, the only way to really get the energy expenditure of weight training is to like do some intensive bodybuilding. And we have to question the long-term practica pra like practicality of that and the increased risk of injuries and those kinds of things. So the yes, there's benefits of strength training, no question, but they tend to be exaggerated. Okay. So I'm going to go into the caveat of cardio, and this is we're going to go into the resistance training overplay. So they overplay the benefit of increasing metabolism. It's overplayed. Like I said, most studies show improvement, but the translation, its reality is much less practical. We're talking maybe like you might burn like, I think I've read somewhere between 10 to maybe 30 calories extra a day from gaining a pound or two of muscle. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when, we, when they talk about the gaining of muscle, they, they kind of, they, they really kind of blow up that calorie burning number to like 50 or 200 calories a day extra, and it's totally not true, it's totally bogus. The science doesn't, doesn't reveal that. Uh, again, I'm not saying it's, it's not, you're not going to see benefit, but what I'm trying to do is clarify the benefit, that it's not as pronounced as what it's portrayed in media and so forth. Cardio caveat. So I just want to show I'm not biased, like, I know it seems like I'm kind of picking cardio, but I'm going to show some caveats of cardio. I'm going to talk about the dark side of cardio, okay? And this is for people who just do cardio, all right? So I see this a lot in clients where, or even members. You can be at a normal body weight but have a high body fat. So we call that being underweight and over fat. So a person has a normal body weight, but they have very little muscle and they have a high percentage of body fat, okay? So that's one of the caveats. And one of the main reasons is that Doing cardio only doesn't put the brakes on muscle loss. That's what strength training does, puts the brakes on muscle loss. So, so what's the optimal weight loss method? Well, you kind of, you, you said it before this started. It's concurrent training, cardio plus weights, all right? And so there's a landmark study that showed that there was greater fat loss in the combined training group versus cardio only and weight training only. That's pretty cool.
And then, this is cool. So cardio is more effective at reducing total body fat, but concurrent training preferentially reduces abdominal fat. And concurrent training potentiated fat loss. So what's cool about that is potentiate, that word, I looked it up. It means like to increase or to augment or to you know, make, make bigger. So while cardio had the most total body fat, the concurrent training, the strength training augmented it. All right, so this is my last slide. It's a cool little, I call it, it's my little thing I came up with when I was in my early 20s. I call it the double-edged sword theory. So I'll show these two arrows. And this right here is a picture of the skin. So this is like the dermis and epidermis. So this is a skin, this is like on top, right, right here. This is the fat that's like underneath the skin. We, do, we actually do a caliper test to pinch. This is the muscle. So in between your skin and your muscle is fat. And so when we do skin folds, if the, if the pinch is thick, then there's more, in theory, there's more of this, subcutaneous fat. If the pinch is thinner, it's, it's a smaller layer of fat, and so the skin is almost, it's just like right, right over the muscle. All right, so the bottom line is the most effective for weight loss is concurrent training, cardio plus weights. Okay, so if I were to rank them, that's number one. Number two is cardio only. The third one is weight training only, okay? Now, just because weight training is last doesn't mean it's not beneficial. If someone wanted to work out and all they wanted to do was weights and they didn't want to do cardio, I would totally support that because it's better than not working out. That's great. But if we can get them to do some cardio, it would probably like really add to their program results. Um, and then the double-edged sword analogy, um, it's kind of cool, is um, basically, like I said, this is, we'll say this is skin and this is muscle and in between is is fat, okay? So if someone just does cardio, they're just kind of taking off the top doing cardio, but they're not really doing much for muscle. So muscle stays there, so they'll plateau with fat loss, or muscle will, will start to decrease. Remember how I said you're not buffering muscle loss with just cardio, you need strength training? So you might actually, that's, that's the skinny fat. So it's like this, and then that either goes down or stays here. Someone who just does weight training, this happens. You increase muscle, but you're not doing anything for calories being expended, so fat just kind of stays there, or sometimes, if you're not expending as much energy but you're adding muscle, you may actually gain weight, right? Because if your diet stays the same and so forth, so it could be a miscalculation there as far as how many calories you take in and how many calories you think you're burning doing weights, right? Whereas, you see these two arrows? The next, the final thing, so we burn the fat with cardio and we muscle out the fat with resistance training. So now we have this. You burn the fat with cardio, right? Now, we, do, we add weight, so either we keep the muscle or we add muscle, look what happens. See? See the arrows? You're burning it with cardio, and you're keeping muscle with weights. So, what happens is, if you do a lot of cardio, sometimes cardio, when we start to see, um, we call it the plateau, when someone hits a plateau, and then metabolism starts to go into this slow down mode, perhaps, then your body starts to kind of actually turn to muscle for energy, and so you can actually lose muscle. Strength training sends a signal to keep muscle in the body, so it kind of allows you to continue to make progress. So, with that, um, yeah. I would say just, uh, you know, kind of control the time you walk, so maybe like do like intervals or don't go as for as long as walks, and you might want to check your shoes. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get better shoes with more supports maybe. If your shoes are too old, they start yeah. to wear out and lose support. You also want to check your surfaces you're walking on. Um, oftentimes you can walk on like, I mean, it's, that's what it's about, you know, the, the gift. So you, maybe you can walk on like grass or, I think at Ottoman Park they even have like that little, like trail. it's like a trail, it's like a trail that's made. Yeah. You could actually walk that's, on that. You think that's better than the road? Um, it tends to be, yeah. At Laughing Your Park, you know, this is Laughing Your Park, they, they started doing this, um, this synthetic rubber, I like that. It's like. Robert, I, I wish, I wish they had tracks like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to give. I think that would be key, and and also weight loss would help too because when you lose weight, it's it reduces the. Uh, well, sure. The, yeah, I mean all those uh -huh. things kind of play a role. So is biking any? Biking and swimming are great. Yeah, elliptical too. Yeah, I would what say. What about if you wanna, the the you know spinning or whatever they call it? 
Um, I mean, I would say if you want to reduce pressure in knees, probably like recumbent bike would probably be good. Recum mm -hmm. Recumbent or upright, you just have to kind of try and see how you respond to it. Mm -hmm. And then you pick the one where you feel like, you know, it's, it's less strain and you're able to, uh, you know, get moving, but yeah. But as far as the muscles that are work, worked in biking, as opposed to walking, do you have oh. an idea? Oh yeah, I mean it's like it's it's like quite different, you know. Like it's almost like I mean you you work a lot more muscle groups and you're taking your legs to a greater range of motion, you know. Whereas running, it's it's uh, I mean it's your legs relatively straight. Cycling is just yeah, it's different. They're different. So for losing weight, what would, would cycling be better than walking, or would walking be better than cycling? I think I think the studies have been kind of mixed. I, I think I've seen some that show walking, I've seen others that show cycling. Mm -hmm. I would say do both. That'd be your best bet, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Spread the love, spread it out. <laughs> Something more interesting to do a little bit of each. Yeah. Keep, so you don't get bored with it. Yeah. Because that's what I find when I do only one thing, then I get bored and I don't want to do it anymore. Uh -huh. But if I do lots of things, it keeps it interesting. Okay. All right. Well, I do like to go outside. I don't like to walk. That was what I was talking about. Especially with the weather changing soon. Yeah. Audubon Park is great. You know, Glad you came. Right, yeah. Fantastic. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Well, I think I know what I have to do. Mm -hmm. I just have to do more of it. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed doing this. This was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that any activity is going to be beneficial. It's going to get you there. Um, but this is what I specialize in. Like, I, I have it. I know the science of of um, the weight loss. And, something that I, I know how to do. I think I might do one next on diet. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a good one. I did a nutrition seminar. It was more for like this competition we had, the gene challenge, but I want to do one on um, on um, nutrition, I think, mm -hmm. you know, and weight loss. I think this is good, but I think diet's a, cr a critical element to it. Oh, sure. A critical mm -hmm. aspect. Well, you have my card, too. So I'm going right. to go ahead and Turn this in. But so yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, I mean, just uh, contact me and ask me questions. But this is great. Okay. I'm glad you came. Okay. This is All fantastic. Right. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I enjoy doing it. I'll probably okay. do some more in the future.